Hello, hi guys. So in this video, we can see practically how we can get the GC related issues and how we can find out that issues, the practical code, right? So for that, I'm creating the Spark code. Uh, for that, I'm creating the Spark session. So it has the executor instance as one and executor memory is 512 MB and I'm giving the executor course as four so that high chances that we can get the GC related issues because we can uh, we are trying to pressurize the memory with four cores, right? So, and we can keep the dynamic memory allocation as false. So let's go ahead and create the Spark session. Super, it has executed. Now explore the Spark UI. So yeah, this is the Spark UI and if you come to the executor section, it has one driver and one executor and you can see the memory details here, right? So now let's go ahead and execute the code. So now I'm disabling the AQE related properties. Super, it has executed. So now I'm creating the two data frames. One is like large data frame with 100 million rows and one is with 1000 rows. Okay, so this 100 million records I'm converting it as a 10 different partitions, right? So let's go ahead and execute this code. Super. Now I'm setting the shuffle partition as 500. Let's go ahead and run this. Super, it has executed. Now I'm performing the join between these two data frames based on the key. So I'm trying to join the larger data frame with smaller data frame, right? So this is actually sort mid join. Let's go ahead and run this. Super. On top of it, I'm performing the aggregate function. This will actually force us to use the more memory, right? So let's go ahead and run this. Super, it has executed. Now we can call in a show action to run the above code and produce the result. So let's go ahead and run this one. So this is taking a long time. Let open the Spark UI and we'll see the more details from there. Yes, so this is the one query that is currently running and it is running from 37 seconds and still it is running so let's explore more details from this job id super now you see currently one active job is running and currently taken 1.1 minute and still it is running so let's explore more details here yes you see this is the stage and currently it has taken 24 uh, seconds still it is running so let's explore this right this is the stage and you see these are the partitions that it has processed okay and uh, these are some higher larger partitions and these are a bit larger partitions and these are smaller one and you can find more details here and here one thing that you need to observe here is the gc time and the duration time okay so total duration to execute the task and the gc time that it has taken okay so if you see on the large max side the total time the task has executed on max cases 0.5 seconds out of which 79 milliseconds it has used for the gc to clean up the objects right so if you can come down under the task section you can explore more details like if you can use this one yeah you see this one it actually errored out with the exit code as 143 the meaning of this 143 is out of memory exception right so it created a it created a pressure on the memory and finally it leads to out of memory error because it didn't find any space to run the job further right so that's where we can see a lot of issues a lot of errors right so this is how where you can see the gc related issues in the spark ui and the second thing is you can open the executor tabs under the execution we can also see the task time inside the bracket gc time right so what is the total time it has taken to process and what is the gc time that it has taken on the executor level right so usually the rule of thumb people can say that the gc time should not exceed the 10 percent of this total task time so that's not be the true all the time it might be very sometime it will be five percent sometime it will be ten percent so mostly when you see this red color in your tasks that means that it is suffering with some gc related issue okay so these are the two places where we can find the gc issues Yes. Now you see our code has failed with the same error as 143. You see executed exit code with 143 and it is killed by external signal. Okay. So now we can try to fix this issue. So since we are trying to join with a larger data frame with smaller data frame, we can use the broadcast join instead of submit join. Okay. So let's go ahead and change the code. Broadcast. And rerun the code. Execute this. Execute this and execute it. Super. Now you see it has produced the result. That means it has executed the code on the backend and it produced the result. So let's explore the Spark UI. So this is the SQL tab, and you see one is the failed query and one is success query. Success query taken 8 seconds, failed query taken 2.4 minutes. Right? So let's explore more details from this job ID. So this is a job. Let's explore more details. 
yes so this is the stage and you see these are all the partitions and you can see the further metric so total time it has taken on max case like 8 milliseconds and 3 milliseconds it spent for gc timeout right so that means it almost taken 30 or 40 percentage of the total execution time right so even in this case it still has the gc issue but still the job is executing right so we can explore the more gc cases right you see the total duration has taken 4 milliseconds out of which 3 milliseconds it, it, it used for gc cleanup right only 1 millisecond that it has utilized for executing the actual task right so likewise you can conclude that based on this time we can say that whether our job is suffers with a gc issue or not if it has a gc issue as i already said right so it has a multiple gc like frequent gc minor or major gc or full gc so it depends on the gc it will consume more time it may lead to job delay or job get failed the out of memory exception as we already seen in previous case so now this is the one way where we can identify the gc issue and the second thing is to know which kind of a gc that it is performing whether it is a minor frequent gc minor gc or full gc we, we can check the logs so how we can check the logs when you are submitting the spark submit command we have to use this spark executor extra java option spark driver extra java option and you have to pass these values purpose gc and print gc details and print gc date stamps and you can also pass some log file location so that it will load all the data it will generate all the data gc related data and it will store it in this file so once you open this file we can get to know which kind of a gc that it is performing taking long time on the backend so we can also configure the old and younger generation using the spark configuration so with the help of like extra java options if you see spark executor memory here i kept it as 6 gb and the extra java option i given like new ratio is 2 gb so what is the meaning of this one is like total heap memory was 6 gb out of which we can assign 2 gb for the younger generation remaining 4 gb will be allocated for the older generation so when to tune it actually like if you have a frequent minor gcs okay so then in that case increase the younger generation with the help of this new ratio if you find full gc and very often then we need to increase the old generation okay and decrease the young generation okay the next you see gc overhead errors and balance between edent and old generation okay so these are the important cases that you can remember